Hey, what's up everyone? So in this video, I will show you how to use AI to generate these high quality 3D models from any flat images that you can find. And all of that should take a few seconds. So let's get into it. So the platform that I'm using is Rodent. So this is an AI 3D model generator that can turn any images into game ready 3D models with just a few clicks. So I did another video about Rodin last year, but that was the beta version. So this year, Rodin recently released the official Gen 1.5, which is far more superior than the beta version, with tons of new features and more importantly, a much more powerful AI capability. Rodin 1.5 can now generate any 3D models with much more accurate mesh details and textures, and especially it can give you the result within a few seconds. So without further ado, let me demonstrate. Alright, so here we are at the Rodin homepage at hyper3d.ai. So here we have a couple of different tools that you can do. So the first one is the 3D generators. And down here we also have some other tools which can be used to control the geometry of the generate model through bounding boxes, rosals, and point clouds. But I'm going to save it for the future videos and let's focus on the 3D generator for now. Uh, so here we have two options, you can generate from one single image or you can generate from multiple images which are different angles from one single object and you can also create a fusion from totally different images. Uh, so first let's try with one single image, see how it's gonna work. So let's click here and upload this image that I have uh, which is um, a um, mid journey generated artwork. So this image that I have here is a good example of what's going to work best for Rodin because it reflects a realistic shadow and highlights and textures on the object surface. So all of these will help the AI to understand the overall structures of the object. And now after uploading the image, let's click here to generate. Uh, so now Rodin can detect how many objects you have in the image. Uh, so you can select one or you can click here to generate the full image. And after a few seconds, it's going to give you the first draft of the 3D object. So from here, you can move it around to inspect the 3D mesh to make sure that it's uh, match your likings. Uh, so for me, I think it's looking pretty good. It's almost identical to the image reference. And you can toggle between different views to inspect it further. And on the right panel, we have this prompt input. Uh, so you can uh, adjust the prompt to uh, edit the 3D object, uh, whatever you like. And down here we have this parameter so you can turn on and off depends on what kind of object that you want to generate. So by default it will automatically select the properties that match your image references. Uh, so first we have the TA pose. So if you upload a character with full arms and legs, uh, it will automatically transform your model into a T pose so you can easily rig it. Uh, but this one don't have legs and arms so uh, let's turn it off. Uh, so we have the detail, uh, so symmetric, if you want your model to be symmetric, you can click here. Uh, this one is for models that have uh, sharp edges, uh, smooth, simple, complex, game ready, and characters. Uh, so yeah, I think this is about right, so uh, let's go with this combination. Uh, and the other thing that you can click here to open this advanced box, uh, so in here, you can change the seed value to mix up the results. So down here we have two sliders. So the first one determine uh, how closely uh, the result will match your uh, criteria. Uh, so let's just uh, increase it to see how it go. And this one determine the number of um, steps it will take to analyze your image references. Uh, so I guess the more step it has, the better result it will be. Uh, and down here is the negative prompt. So whatever you don't want to include in the result, you can type it here. Uh, so for now, let's let's just go with this. Uh, so down here we have this direction section. So this is only available for multiple images uh, generating. So uh, we only use once now. So let's skip it. So after you adjust these parameters, you can click on this redo button to give it another try. So you can redo up to 50 times before confirming the model. So this is going to give you a lot of flexibility in to try with different combination in order to get the best results. So now it's gonna give you the second iterations. Uh, so for this one, I think it's look a little bit more details, but it also gives some details to the classes, which is not what I wanted. So I think uh, I prefer the previous version. So 
uh, you can always go to this history tab here which start all of your iteration that you generated and revert back to the previous one so whenever you feel satisfied with the result you can click on this confirm button to start generating the full versions uh, so here we have two options to select uh, either you choose pro mode or quad mass uh, will be the same depends on what kind of purpose that you're going to use this 3d model for otherwise it doesn't matter so let's just select this pro mode so click here to confirm and only this time will cost you uh, some credits uh, so the other iteration that you did previously will not so i think this is really cool because uh, you don't want to pay uh, for something that you're not satisfied with um, so now we have this uh, full generated 3d models so it looks really good um, in this view so when you can see all of the details is really precisely captures in this 3d models uh, which is almost identical to the image reference and another really cool feature uh, here is this mass editor so after you confirm models you can open this mass editor to adjust its photos so from here it will give you a bunch of different scoping tools uh, so you can just uh, use your mouse to kind of brush it and shape it uh, in the way that you uh, prefer so after you're done you can click confirm and it will save your modification and get you back to Rodin all right so now we can move to the next step which is to generate the materials so by default it will analyze your image references and will generate the textures based on it or you can add more images to create a texture fusion but for now let's go with a simple way uh, so let's click here to generate and here we have a bunch of options uh, so the first one determine the complexity of the textures and the second one determine how closely it will be to your reference images um, so let's just increase this and so let's also turn on this face restore feature so it will enhance the face of your model uh, so now let's click generate so the generation process would take uh, from few seconds to up to one minute depends on how complex your model is and boom we have a texture shows up in uh, the models here so let's take a look at this so i think it's looking pretty good like it's pretty impressive how it can generate the back of the characters without any references and i don't see any floor or error at all so overall i think this is pretty spot on and this is a huge improvement since the beta version so uh, yeah, I think it's looking good. Uh, so now you have the option to redo uh, up to 15 time or if you're happy with this, you can click confirm to uh, generate the full texture. So uh, let's just confirm because it's already perfect. And after the texture is being fully developed, uh, now you can uh, pack the whole thing and download uh, the 3D model so you can use for any purposes that you liked. Uh, so let's make sure to check these and then just hit download. Uh, so here's what we have in the package so we have the shaded photos with the fbx files and the bpr photo with more textures so now i'm going to show you how to use the free model that you downloaded so here i am in splice and i just need to drag this fbx file into the scene and then let's go to the materials and upload the textures that we generated so click here and you can use either uh, this one or the other one in the other photos uh, so let's click here so now you see that it's already looking pretty good with the textures on and then just change the color to green so it look a little bit better and you can also improve it even better by using this trick uh, so let's uh, add another image here and then go to the pbr photos and select this metallic textures uh, so this texture would define which area is reflective so the white area is reflective and the darker area is not uh, so this way you can add uh, the reflection effect to the 3d model just using this uh, texture so let's go back here and add another layers and select matte cap and just uh, select something like this and then just drag this layer down below the metallic image and from here let's select mask so now it's only show the reflection in the white area which is the glasses here uh, so i think this is really cool 
So another thing I want to show you is we can use multiple images, uh, for example, like some random object that you can take photo from home and just use this and you can generate it into 3D. So I have these uh, images from the shoes and I cut out a background and now just upload everything to uh, Rodins and uh, check on use alpha channels and just click generate and select uh, multi view and let's just wait for the magic happens and boom we have a really nice because 3d models here and it's looking pretty good so the more uh, reference image that you upload the better the results uh, will be so this is how it looks like with the textures on so pretty spot on uh, so the last thing I want to show you is something I really like. Uh, so I have this image of the Sonic character. So let's quick generate this one to see how it's going to turn out. Uh, so the first result is going to give you exactly the posing that the character do. And this is already looking pretty awesome. So look at the details and the edges. It's really refined. So now if I turn on this TA pose and click redo. So you can see that it will magically turn the 3D models into a T-Pose model. So now this is ready for you to rig and animate in no time. So imagine how much time and money is going to save you from purchasing 3D assets from marketplace and have to deal with a lot of different things, incompatibility. Um, so yeah, overall this is a really really good improvement. And oh, I'm pretty impressed of how much is has developed since the beta versions. So I think this is potentially is gonna be the future of 3D artists. It's not the end of 3D artists, but the future because it's gonna give you the opportunity to save time and focus on your creativity rather than have to spend time to build the characters on a pretty model from scratch. It will just take out all of the busy work and save you for the best only. Uh, so yeah, this is the end of my video today. So I hope you find this one helpful uh, and I'll see you in the next one